If you want to know what's going on in your community, you've got to go to your community blog. And if you live in the Central District, you're going to the Central District News. So right here on Community Blog TV is Tom Fucoloro, the editor of the Central District News. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, gosh, it's, uh, it's hard to believe that it's been a month since you were here. But, yeah. uh, you know, every time I go to the Central District News, you've got an awful lot going. Yep. You try, <laughs> anyway. There's some great communities uh, around Seattle. And then Central District, do you think that it has its own identity separate and apart from Rainier Valley and West Seattle and other communities? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's got a, a complicated um, history of you know, being a center of you know, diversity and um, you know, the struggles of you know, poor populations. And uh, you know, some of it's ugly, some of it's wonderful. And yeah, it's just, it's uh, lively. <laughs> it is lively, and, and actually you can read an awful lot about it by going to centraldistrictnews.com, and there's, uh, I don't know how many stories that you put up every day. Again, I am convinced that you work 36 hours a day. Uh, let's actually go to the first story that we're going to talk about. The Parks Department seeks feedback on community center cutbacks. Is this a big deal? Um, yeah, it's definitely a big deal. Um, I don't know if the, um, in our neighborhood, how it would... Um, you know, affect like Garfield Community Center, yes, sir, Community Center, because you know those are um, one of the more, some of the more used community centers in the city, and um, the the plan, you know, is looking at some smaller centers around the city, and could maybe even you know lease those out to um, for long term use by um, you know other nonprofits other than the city. Um, but I don't, I don't think anyone's going to do that to Garfield, <laughs> um, so I don't know if you know, the most extreme things would happen in our neighborhood, but um, we've certainly felt a lot of the park's cutbacks, um, you know, especially in with the closing of the waiting pool. Um, so, you know, we're not immune to park's cutbacks, but, you know, the community center discussion is an interesting one. Um, well, it's actually, let's, we're going to go to a quote, or I'm going to read from it, from it itself. It says, by dramatically reducing use at several centers, the city was able to save $1.3 million, and now they're looking at ways to restructure community center operations and revenue streams in order to reduce the department's reliance on the city's general fund. One of the things that, that they talked about was the, uh, the use of volunteers inside the community centers, mm -hmm. you know, just people from the public, and it seems like there's an awful lot of people out there willing to do that. Yeah, they, they actually determined in their um, study that Increasing the number of volunteers is, you know, of course, a good idea, but they would be unlikely to save money doing that because they need to be trained. And if it's a job that has to happen, you know, you need someone, a pay, you know, paid staff is going to be more reliable to do those jobs. That sounds kind of lame to me, though. I mean, the community center is just that. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's there for the community. And, um, I mean, is there something else going on in this, do you think, or is that is that a... a I don't know. That might be <laughs> oh, okay. outside the range of the research I did in the story, but <laughs> um, but I mean, I think it makes sense that you know uh, a volunteer job is not necessarily um, you you know you're going to have limited hours that you can mm -hmm. dedicate to it. So you're going to have limited um, you know breadth of experience um, with the job that you know a paid staff who can act, you know a person who can actually do it on a regular basis is going to be better at it get more done um, and probably less likely to just call in um, which is what you see in lots of organizations nothing against volunteers or anything but mm -hmm. you know it's it's probably you know drops a tier on your priority yeah. scale which makes sense you have other things you need to do yeah all right let's go to the next one on uh, centraldistrictnews.com the Jackson Place Community Council seeking candidates for a June 20th meeting uh, Jackson Place is 23rd and Jackson is that that area there yeah, yeah, and um, basically south of Jackson. Um. And so what is it that um, the Jackson Place Community Council, what do they do? Um, well, just like any other community council, um, you know, there's several different uh, kind of communities within the Central District, um, and they kind of handle the, a wide range of 
you know, whatever issue needs to be dealt with, um, that there needs to be some kind of, you know, neighborhood response. They're kind of the de facto mm -hmm. neighborhood to go to. Now, they're not a, a government entity. Uh, they're independent. <coughs> um, yeah, totally a bunch of volunteers. <laughs> <coughs> I believe they're yeah. all volunteers. <laughs> now, are they, but when they say they need candidates for their council, I mean, is that a breeding ground for, you know, city council candidates in the future? Is that, <laughs> is that what they're looking for? Oh, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're, you know, just having annual elections and, you know, trying to keep, you know, new blood coming through, I'm sure. Um, All yeah, right. Because, I mean, that, that's the biggest uh, downfall of a community organization is if it gets too stale. So yeah. I'm sure that, that they're trying to get a lot of applicants if they can. Uh, there's something really big going on. It's about Yesler Terrace. And mm -hmm. uh, you wrote um, you know, the, the column, it's a new Yesler Terrace Part 1, what could go wrong? And, you know, there's some great artist renditions, but what could go wrong? What well, could go right first? <laughs> well, I <laughs> guess um, the plan would be that, you know, as soon as the city would offer up, you know, sections of Yesler Terrace, which is, um, you know, owned by the Seattle Housing Authority, mm -hmm. um, which is, has surprisingly little oversight from the uh, general, uh, the city pol pol um, political machine. Um, which is can be a good and a bad thing. Um, if they want to do something that the people don't like, the you know city council and the mayor don't have a whole lot of say in it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have an unfriendly council and mayor, come budget time, it's harder to cut Seattle housing's funding. So you know there's a give and take there of having letting that organization have so much independence. Um, um, in this case, the uh, they have this plan to completely take the neighborhood and redesign it to have a bunch of upscale you know, towers, basically housing and office towers, and that the money that they make from the sale of that land will fund uh, new housing in Yeso Terrace for um, low-income people. Because um, right now it's falling apart and they don't want to just keep you know, putting scotch tape on the walls, <laughs> and yeah, hoping yeah. it all holds together. So this is a, is a residential mix of upscale and subsidized housing. Exactly. Does and that so, work anywhere? Um, there are, they, ha they claim they have examples of where his work. I have not um, personally ever visited mm -hmm. one, but. Um, I'm not saying that it shouldn't. I'm just wondering if, yeah, there, if there's examples, it would be great to see. There are a lot of examples. There are a lot of examples of uh, when you have a housing project and you basically segregate out the poorest people in your community into kind of one section um, you know you get this area that um, you know just becomes you know crime ridden and mm -hmm. you know, all those kind of issues which yes so terrace really isn't and so that's kind of why it's an interesting case you know mm -hmm. if yes or terrace were this in, you know extremely low-income neighborhood that had just been completely overrun with crime problems because you know it's just uh, you know basically a ghetto if you will um, then then I think their plan might make more sense to more people. Um, yeah, I want to go to a comment, um, and it says, change is scary, but, this is a, a comment mm -hmm. of one of uh, the Central District News readers, it says, it could also be argued that the city would be doing a disservice to the people by not reinvigorating the area, leaving people behind while others, other things are improved and advanced, et cetera, et cetera. And then the person goes on to say, uh, wealthy people are not going to live there, wealthy people live in Bellevue and Kirkland and downtown in high-rises. Well, it, it sounds like what you described is that they intend to build a bit of a high-rise there, is that right? Yeah, they're building some some very tall high-rise towers, um, and then the replacement housing will be in mid-rise towers um, within the same neighborhood. And, I mean, there's lots of great things about this. What's the timing on it? 10 to 20 years. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. About um, when we get light rail, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, that's when the plan is supposed to be completed. Oh, um, I see. But the timing on approving the plan is the summer, um, and the council and the mayor will, I think the mayor is involved, but the council certainly will have to approve um, the plans that the Seattle Housing Authority is bringing forward. The, they want this, the council to give them free range to have um, the zoning uh, permitted for the entire neighborhood so they don't have to, for each building, mm -hmm. get oh. it rezoned. Yeah, that adds which, cost. And that adds cost and that adds delay, and they want to do this really quickly. Um, so this might be the council's only chance to weigh in on the, 
on the oh, project on the entire neighborhood for the next 10, 20 years. Um, you know, which is one of those things where it's like, maybe we should really be paying attention, like looking really closely, you know, and I don't necessarily have a, a, a dog in the race, but um, I do want I've, to be very clear what's going on. And that's kind of why I keep writing about it. All right. So be sure to follow the Central District News on this on this issue. Maybe you're going to want to get involved. Uh, let's continue on with something that's uh, a bit controversial, actually, to the extent of a lawsuit. Inside the Seattle Girls School lawsuit, family seeks damages for pervasive bullying. And um, certainly the it's not good for a lawsuit to be tried in the press. Um, at the same point in time, this is right in the middle of the Central District. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are interested in this, aren't they? Definitely. I mean, it, you know, it's also... Uh, um, you know, not within the public schools, so it has its own rules, and people have their own opinions about that, too. Um, yes, yeah. they, they do, because <laughs> I, I want to go to a comment, because the comment says conflicting accounts. It says, I spent some time reading through all the comments on the Como story. There are quite a few posts from the plaintiff's friends who are current and former students at Seattle Girls School, and it seems that we are hearing and reading in the media is a different story from what the plaintiff's friends had to say. I took that to mean that there are just a lot of people that don't believe these allegations. Yeah, and I mean, we don't, we don't know enough for people to be coming to their own opinions about what did or did not happen. You know, we have basically, you know, these, uh, this lawsuit and then all these, you know, basically the, the claims from the plaintiff. And that's about it. Um, I, I don't know. It's, it, it's, I think it's silly sometimes when people want to say, no, she's clearly ridiculous, or someone's mm -hmm. like, no, she was just horribly abused, you know, in the school. And it's like, we, we really don't have no much yet. And it's, yeah. kind of, <laughs> it's kind of, probably a good, a good idea if, to let the trial take place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If what she said happened, happened, then that's horrible. Yeah. But, you know, if there's, you know, a little fabrication, then we just don't know that yet. Yeah. So, I don't or, know. Or uh, <laughs> hyperbole or, you know, exaggeration. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, like you said, you don't know, and so uh, let the court system, uh, you know, take place. Okay, something else. Coyote Central's grand opening is June the twelfth. What is Coyote Central? Coyote Central is an basically an arts and education organization that mm -hmm. right now is operating out of a space in. Well, I guess not right now. We're formally operating out of a space in Madison Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and they provide. Yeah, let's actually go to the next click because their their website is there. That maybe there's looks like there's lots of cool stuff. Yeah, they have lots and lots and lots of summer programs um, and programming all year round um, for just youth to you know have a chance to try out something that they had never tried out. You know, you can do everything from furniture making to animation classes to uh, learn how to weld, learn how to do glass blowing, um, learn how to cook, learn how to. Uh, I think there's like a dance class or a couple dance classes probably. Um, I mean, it's just really what, you know, young people would be interested in knowing how to do, but maybe don't have, mm -hmm. you know, someone there to do it. And what's cool about Coyote Central is that they find professionals to come in and teach these classes, you know, so they're kind of coming from the, their own, you know, different parts of the city all coming, to, you know, and you're getting a real, uh, real life experience um, from these people and that's that's really cool lots of locations of coyote central where that are somehow participating with them like the, there's the the coyote at uh, 23rd and cherry there's one at 2719 east madison another one at the miller community center and one at uh, northwest film forum which is at uh, 1515 12th avenue how do they fit into coyote central well the um it's all the same organization and they're moving the headquarters to 23rd and cherry um, and they also are having a kitchen space there and a general instructional space so just like a space they can do whatever they want with um but for things like welding and glass blowing you know they're not bringing that into the space yeah, so they're, they're going to these other places around the city um that have you know the, the tools and all that is already set up and so those classes would take place elsewhere um if if necessary, and then mm -hmm. anything that can fit in the space, I think fits in the space. So if you want more information for your child to possibly participate in Coyote Central, or if you're an older child and you can do this for yourself, go to centraldistrictnews.com, read the article, click on the links, and you're gonna learn an awful lot more. Uh, we're very fortunate right here on Community Blog TV to be talking with Tom Fucolero, who is the editor of the Central District News at centraldistrictnews.com. It is all the news that you're gonna wanna know uh, and in, just in case you, there's not news there that you want to know, 
there's a great way for you to, to participate yourself by asking questions, posting comments, learning from your fellow uh, residents and, and fellow readers of centraldistrictnews.com. It's a great, great community blog. Okay, let's fight. Okay. But I don't want to fight with uh, Queen Underwood, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the no. uh, King Five, the area businesses help keep, keep uh, Queen Underwood fighting, and you have followed her from the beginning almost. Yeah, yeah. We, um, we, were, we wrote a story about um, Queen Underwood when she was still working as a pipe fitter for like a sprinkler systems or something, <laughs> and then she was uh, doing this boxing on the side. Um, she's been doing it ever since she graduated from Garfield High School. Mm -hmm. um, and recently she's really just gone full time on it, and she's got a whole team of people behind her um, trying to get her ready for the Olympics. She is the national champion. Um, I think she's ranked third in the world. Really? So she's doing... From she's, right here in the Central District. Yeah, right? yeah, so she's, she's positioned well, um, but you know it's gonna take a lot of work um, this is the first time they're offering women's boxing medals mm -hmm. in the Olympics, so uh, it's kind of, it's probably pretty wide open. <laughs> so do you go jogging with her? Because doesn't she like jog around town and have a... She, she did an event an last entourage? weekend, and I did not go. Um, I got there just a little late, actually. Uh -oh. <laughs> but then I went on the garden tour, so much more relaxing. Well, we'll, yeah, we'll be, talking about, <laughs> we'll be talking about the garden tour here in just a minute. But, but having someone, an athlete of this caliber, especially someone who is pretty much a pioneer, that's pretty cool right here in your area, isn't it? It's really cool. And uh, what the subject of that story was, was that there are all these um, you know, little businesses in the central area and central district that are um, helping her out in whichever way they can. Um, I mean, Togo Coffee is uh, giving her like free lattes <laughs> whenever she <laughs> needs them. Um, you know, a hairstylist is doing her hair. You know, just like any little thing that she needs that they can help out with, they can. But now they're looking for, for big money. Um, which you may have to go outside the Central District for the $300,000 that she's looking mm -hmm. for. Well, you know, take maybe a, not. Uh, you eat an elephant a bite at a time, and so maybe that's what's happening right now. Yeah. Uh, let's continue on. After raising over $24,000, the Real Girls redesigns its summer program with a media justice focus. Uh, we here at this facility are very familiar with Real Girls. Great organization, does great work. Yes. Uh, what, what, uh, what, uh, what's the deal here? What's their twenty-four thousand dollars? This new money. Well, they um, only some of it's new money. Some of it was replacement money. So they uh, they used to get um, I think it was eighteen thousand dollars from uh, Comcast mm -hmm. to do some summer programs, and you know they had that all set and ready to go. Um, and then they sent out a a tweet on Twitter um, that was critical of the um, Comcast hire of FCC Commissioner Baker. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she voted for the Comcast NBC merger just months before getting hired for a lot of money by Comcast, which seems suspicious to a lot of people. So they just noted the suspicion and said this does not sound right and then sent a link to some online campaign that was going that someone else had organized um, against that and you know calling attention, calling for investigation. And well, Comcast decided to pull their money <laughs> And sent them an email and said, well, if you're going to tweet things like this, then I guess we're not going to fund your summer program. And they're like, what? So a national campaign got launched. Um, Comcast apologized, offered the money back, and they said, nah, we'll just raise it ourselves. So they ended up raising several thousand dollars more than Comcast, than the funding that they had lost, just uh, nationally through fundraising campaigns. So, um, and likewise, they've reorganized the summer program to be media justice focused since their whole experience with Comcast, you know, trying to pull their funding for something they said is mm. kind of brings that to the forefront again of that's kind of what they were talking about when they were being <laughs> critical of Comcast. <laughs> exactly what they did. Well, congratulations to Real Girls. Uh, without regard to Comcast, congratulations to them on being able to continue their summer program. They do a fantastic job. Uh, let's go to a new, another story, and this is a burglary roundup. Uh, and it is that the equipment was stolen from Langston Hughes and the Bush School. Um, there's, there's lots of crime that goes on all over the city. I mean, it just happens. It's a part of life. Mm -hmm. um, I have noticed, though, that in the Central District News, there's been less and less reporting of that. Is that because there's less crime or just because you just decided not to say bad things anymore? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it, well, it comes in ways. We report it when it's um, really in your face. Um, 
we try not to dig up too much dirt. That's kind of the, the, the point of the roundup was like, you know, you should know that these things are happening, but I'm not going to write a story every single time a uh, place is broken into. Yeah, well, um, certainly Langston Hughes and, and Both Bush School are two very, very popular or well-traveled yeah. areas. So. Yeah, so I mean, that was, you know, that was a big story, um, just, or a big enough story, you know, to be put out there just because they're, um, these big places, and they're kind of unusual that people would steal equipment, construction equipment, lawn care equipment. Maybe that's not unusual, but <laughs> um, they stole a lot of it. it was <laughs> <laughs> they stole a lot of it, yeah. And, and, uh, and certainly, you know, stealing from a school, even though, you know, it's a private school, stealing from a school, you know, that's tough on them. And stealing from Langston Hughes, I mean, it's a nonprofit area there, so. Yeah, yeah, they, I guess they technically stole from the contractors. I don't know how that'll oh, work out, but, oh, right. but that's, not, that's not necessarily the, good either. No, <laughs> it's, cer it's certainly not. It's just going to come back. The cost is going to be on us and the contributors, too. Okay, you talked about the garden tour earlier, so let's talk about it now. Over 1,000 people go on a sunny Central District garden tour. I didn't know there were any gardens in the Central District. There are. And there's some great pictures. You know, here's a, here, here's a guy who is, uh, uh, who is hoeing, and uh, I guess he's planting a garden there himself. Yeah, so that's at the Alleycat Acres Urban Farm, um, and he had an Alleycat Acres shirt on. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, I couldn't see that. I think I think he's uh, he's working too hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's um, yeah. They're just doing that. Farm is just looks incredible these days. And Let's actually go to the next picture because I think I recognize this. Isn't this uh, this next picture here? Uh, it's Watch Us Grow. It's this one right here. I'm going to show mm -hmm. that to you. And that is a, and that's on 23rd, right? Yeah, uh, no, that's on MLK and MLK. Union. Yeah, MLK and Union, and that's uh, that used to be a vacant lot for like the longest time. Yeah, um, I don't know if anything has been there since uh, regrading yeah. the area. Right. Um, and there are plans, there are plans on the books somewhere, but uh, it's stalled for at least three years because that's how long they're letting uh, Green Plate Special move in, which is also a very cool organization. Mm. Um, doing so can the guarding. public, can anybody just come and plant something there? Green Plate Special, their focus is on um, basically uh, youth that are may not typically have access to things like gardens and healthy foods and, you know, for economic reasons. And let's go to the next two pictures quickly because they are just gorgeous. There's this one beautiful, uh, mm -hmm. where, are, where is this? I want to go there. That is in, uh, the first one is in uh, Madison Valley. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you can just walk in whenever you want because it's someone's backyard. Oh. <laughs> um, but if you ever see a, a yard with some ponies in it, it's next door to that. <laughs> yeah, I, wait a minute, ponies in the Central District? I didn't know that that was. Yeah, there are, there are ponies. I didn't know that either <laughs> until I saw them. It's <laughs> like, wow. But yeah, this um, just a fantastic garden, you know, decades of work. <laughs> um, and then the last one is uh, over um, near Flowware Park is where the next photo is. Mm. And it's... Uh, it's a really cool garden with lots of really interesting stonework. Um, there's actually found materials, like discarded materials from around the neighborhood that she used to make these mosaics, and walkways throughout this garden. It's, it's fantastic. All right. Now we have to go to the personality of the Central District News because it, it comes out, or the Central District, it comes out in the Central District News itself. Madrona's new Pretty Boys Pizzeria starts regular hours on Saturday. And so, you know, when I was reading this, and I was thinking, okay, here's just another small business that's starting. But then I got, I went to the comments. And as I was reading the comment after comment after comment, it's all about gluten-free this, gluten-free that. And here's something, uh, and people really got after each other. And so then this, this one person comments, um, welcome to Madrona, pretty boy. Uh, any chance we could try to be civil and hold off attacking people for innocent comments on this website? Uh, geez, some people are, are meaner than my oldest sister. And the response is, your older sister sucks. <laughs> so, and then there's the next comment is this. And it says, uh, hours of entertainment provided by reading the comments on this site. Thanks, Central District News. <laughs> Actually, yes, there is a, a huge personality of the district that seems to come out through the blog. Yeah, definitely. And on, on that story um, in particular, it was like a sunny day. I don't know if it was like full moon maybe, <laughs> but just for some reason people felt like, like someone asked, oh, is there going to be gluten-free crust? And it just someone decided that they needed to pick a fight on people who have gluten allergies and, and people needed to defend that person. And it just went downhill really quickly. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't, I didn't see that coming, but you know, you never know where the, where some kind of comment fight is going to start. Um, is it something, I, and maybe you shouldn't tell me this, uh, but do you try to start fights? 
I don't try to start fights. <laughs> I don't. I don't particularly like comet fights at all. I mm -hmm. think that they can really detract, um, you know, from the story that you know. W once the comets have been taken over by some argument about whether or not people have gluten allergies, you kind of stop talking about Pretty Boy's Pizza, which is just opened up and we should be talking about Pretty Boy's Pizza and whether that, you know, have you been there? Yeah. How did it taste? <laughs> like, you know, these are more useful, I yeah. think. Um, but, you know, people seem to be in the mood to fight and that was one of the more innocent fights that they could have. You know, sometimes they're, they're a little uglier. Well, this next story actually was, was similar to that in, in a different way. The, uh, uh, the, the headline is the HRS, um, that's the Hamlin Robinson School, right? Mm -hmm. uh, student activism at the TT Minor Playfield. So, you know, and I thought, hey, this is really cool. There's lots of people being active at the play field, and so I'll go to the comments. Let's go to this, because there were 18 comments at the time that I looked, and that's, and that's mm -hmm. a lot. And I was thinking, wow, you know, a lot of people are, are giving strokes to everybody else. But then I started to get into the comments, and this is what they were all about. Let's go to the picture. It was all about whether or not dogs could, have a, could be there uh, mm -hmm. on leash or off leash at the TT Minor play field. Yeah, I, I think that that was really great because I think that is exactly the conversation that um, Hamlin Robinson was trying to start was, you know, what is, you know, here is this space, it's a park, mm -hmm. but it's also where the kids in the school have recess. Um, what is your responsibility as a dog owner as far as, you know, picking up after your dog? Um, and that is the exact conversation that played out in the comments. And, you know, it was... It was, it was awesome. I was like, wow, well, there you go. I, I would <laughs> say that that project that they did worked. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, less than a minute left, and I hope that this worked too, because you won't see this in a newspaper, but you can see it in a community blog. And it's found two female boxer puppies. And then just the comments and the discussions that there was about these two female boxer puppies that were found. Beautiful picture. Whatever happened? Um, they were reunited with their owner. Oh, after, okay. After being... I think they had been found, they weren't um, spayed or market tripped, which is why they couldn't find the owner. So I think they did that before giving it back. Um, but I don't know exactly how that works, but last I heard, they were back with the owners. So so that that's a completely different use of a community blog, and I don't know mm -hmm. if you were in college or if you, I don't even know if you went to journalism school, but that's probably not the kind of thing that you would have thought of at the time, <laughs> that your professors would have thought of. Yeah, yeah, I didn't think that I'd be... Uh, yeah, trying to find anyone's dogs, but <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so just people get so excited when people are reunited with lost dog stories, um, just because you know it's your your neighbor's dog. You want them to find that. <laughs> well, there there again, we have the incredible diversity of the Central District. So, Tom, thank you very much for being with us. CentralDistrictNews.com, very very interesting, very very diverse. You're gonna want to read it early, and you're gonna want to read it often. We'll see you right here next week on Community Blog TV. Take care. Mm -hmm.